Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at liver structure and function for your A liver biology. Liver structure. You need to know all the vessels that go into and out of the liver. The first one is the hepatic artery. This brings oxygenated blood to the liver from the heart. Deoxygenated blood then leaves the liver through the hepatic vein and returns to the heart. The hepatic portal vein brings blood from the small intestine. This means it contains all the products of digestion, including any toxic substances that may have been absorbed. The bile duct is where bile travels to the gallbladder to be stored. We need to know the varied roles of the liver. It makes bile, which is obviously useful in digestion. It helps to break down metabolic waste products. It helps to remove toxic substances from the body, such as drugs or alcohol. It helps to regulate blood sugar levels. It does this in a few ways. It can store glucose as glycogen. It can break that glycogen down again to produce glucose. It can also produce glucose from other molecules and it can break down insulin. Another function of the liver is that it breaks down like old red blood cells. It also produces cholesterol and plasma proteins. And it helps to break down hormones. So as you can see, this is a really long list and this isn't even an extensive list of all of the functions, metabolic functions that the liver has. It's a really, really important organ. Now let's look at the internal structure. The liver is made up of sections called lobules. A lobule is a cylindrical structure of hepatocytes, which are liver cells. These are arranged in spirals or in straight lines that radiate out from the centre. And in the centre, there is a central vein, which is a branch of the hepatic vein. There are many branches of the hepatic vein, the hepatic artery and the bile duct all around each lobule that drain into the central vein. The capillaries, which connect these branches of the hepatic artery and the hepatic portal vein, are connected by capillaries called sinusoids. Kupfer cells. These are attached to the walls of the sinusoids. They remove bacteria and they break down old red blood cells. The bile duct is also connected by branches to the central vein. These branches or tubes are called caniculi. They come from the same origin as the word canal. So a singular of these tubes is called a caniculus. You also need to be able to recognise these structures in microscope slides. This is a sample of liver tissue that has been stained with hematoxylin and eosin. This large circular space in the middle, that's the central hepatic vein in the centre of our lobe. The white areas or spaces are the sinusoids. Remember, these are capillaries. All of the purple cells we can see are hepatocytes and you can see their nuclei are stained darker and they look like purple dots. Bile production and pigment excretion. Bile is secreted by the liver and aids in digestion. So it emulsifies lipids, so it breaks large fat droplets into smaller fat droplets and it helps to neutralise the stomach acid in the small intestine. It is also how pigments such as bilirubin are excreted. Bilirubin is formed from the breakdown of haemoglobin, which is obviously another pigment found in red blood cells. And this is done by the Kupfer cells. The bilirubin is then added to bile and therefore it goes into the small intestine and then it leaves the body bound up in feces. So as we said, bile is secreted by the liver cells, the hepatocytes. It was released into the bile colliculi, which are the kind of canal-like structures and they all drain into the bile duct. And then this transports bile to the gallbladder where it is stored. So the gallbladder stores the bile and then that obviously gets squirted into the small intestine and mixes with all of the enzymes and everything to help with the digestion and neutralise the stomach acid. 
And then obviously it will pass through the small intestine and through the large intestine because it doesn't get absorbed in, if you're bilirubin. And that will then be bound up in feces and will exit through the rectum. Detoxification. The liver will detoxify the blood. So toxins are either oxidized, reduced, methylated or combined with other molecules to make them harmless. And this all happens in the liver and it uses enzymes. So a couple of examples of the enzymes in the liver that help to carry out this function. One is catalase. This converts hydrogen peroxide into oxygen and water. Cytochrome P450. There's loads of cytochromes in the body and they can help with various things, including being part of things like the electron transport chain, which is necessary for photosynthesis and respiration. But cytochrome P450 is present in the liver and helps to break down drugs, including cocaine. So your cytochromes being used for drug metabolism means that they might not be being used to help with respiration metabolism and other metabolic reactions in the body, which is why sometimes that gives you some of the side effects of having those drugs. Right, so let's look at specifically alcohol detoxification as an example. So first of all, we need to convert ethanol into ethanol. And that's done by the ethanol dehydrogenase enzyme. So hydrogen ions are removed and that is used to produce reduced NAD, which is a coenzyme. The ethanol is then converted to ethanoic acid and that is done by ethanol dehydrogenase enzyme. So again, two hydrogens removed and again, we produce another reduced NAD. The ethanoic acid or acetate is then added to another coenzyme, coenzyme A, to produce acetyl-CoA. This can then be used in respiration. If the liver detoxes too much alcohol, then not enough NAD is left to break down fatty acids for respiration. These fatty acids are then stored as lipids in the hepatocytes, and this is how we get something called fatty liver disease after long-term binge drinking, lots of drinking of alcohol. The breakdown of excess amino acids in the liver. The first step is deamination, which is circled here. We don't need to know all these names, and this is an example with a specific type of amino acid. But the main thing we need to know about deamination is what it is, which is where the amino acids have their amine group removed. This forms ammonia and then organic acids. The organic acids go away and they're going to be processed in a different way, but the ammonia is what's going to enter the ornithine cycle. We have to combine the ammonia with carbon dioxide in order for it to enter the ornithine cycle. It's too toxic to try and excrete the ammonia as it is, so we have to put it into the ornithine cycle to convert it to urea. The rest of the diagram shows the ornithine cycle. This mostly takes part outside of the mitochondria and in the cell cytoplasm of the liver cells. Again, you don't necessarily need to know all of the names of the products and the stages in this cycle. We just need to know that obviously ammonia and carbon dioxide are used to enter the ornithine cycle, and it produces water and urea at the end. Also, this process requires ATP, and so we need to know that in case we could get a question that asks us about why this could be stopped or how the process could be slowed down if there's no ATP present, this cycle cannot happen. Urea and water are produced and the urea is filtered from the blood by the kidneys and then it enters urine and is excreted from the body. So the main points of this cycle we need to know is that we have ornithine. That is going to then be converted into citrulline using one of the ammonias and carbon dioxide. And then citrulline is converted into arginine, again, using another ammonia. And then the arginine is converted back to ornithine by removing urea. So, as I said, the majority of the stages of the cycle happen in the cytoplasm, but the first part, the deamination and the combining of the ammonia and the carbon dioxide happen in the mitochondria in liver cells. To summarise this, what looks quite long and complicated, Ammonia and carbon dioxide are used to produce urea and water. Ouch!
This is why in some videos I will explain scratches. 